Hey, it's Steve from Minerva here, and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 of my favorite menswear patterns for the autumn and winter seasons. The days are starting to get colder and shorter now, but we all still wanna be showing off our self-made wardrobes, and these patterns offer some fantastic options, whether you're looking to create something as part of a capsule wardrobe or more of an out and out statement piece. For each pattern, I've also picked out a fabric, which I think would work brilliantly, and we'll look at those in a bit more detail which will hopefully help you if you are on the fence about trying one of them, or perhaps it'll introduce you to a totally different option that you hadn't considered for your next project. Some of the fabrics I've picked are quite classic, but there's also a couple of wild cards in there as well. So stay tuned and let me know what you think of my fabric choices in the comments below. All of the patterns and fabrics that I'm gonna talk about today are available from us and are linked directly below this video. If you have a Minerva account, you can click and save them for later. And don't forget to post pictures of your final makes. If you don't have an account just yet, it is free to sign up and you'll also get a discount code for your next purchase with us. So without any further delay, in no particular order, here are my 10 favorite autumn winter menswear patterns. Okay, so kicking off our list is this pleated trouser pattern from DP Studio. It's bang on trend at the moment in terms of its fit, being nice and full at the top with the aid of the pleats and then tapering as it moves down the leg. There are two slanted side pockets, as well as two piped back pockets with flaps, which I think is a really nice added detail here. DP Studios have given this a difficulty rating of two out of three, so mostly suited for intermediate sewers. I'd probably agree with that, but I do think there's a few details in the trousers which can be tinkered with, things like the back pockets, just to make them a little bit easier if that was something that was putting you off giving this pattern a try. These trousers would pair really nicely with a long coat, a smart shirt, or even just a plain t-shirt, as illustrated on the pattern. And your fabric choices are going to be pretty endless, really. Cord and wool are always gonna be two very popular options here, but you could also use a heavy cotton or perhaps even a denim. You could go lighter with your fabric choice, but you do want to make sure that you strike that balance between the drape of the fabric and the intended shape of the garments. If you go too light with your fabric choice, you do risk the garment becoming just a little bit too flowy here. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this stretch suiting fabric from the Minerva Core range. It's a polyester viscose blend available at just under 60 inches wide and has a small amount of spandex, which is what's giving it that stretch. I love the classic tech design on this fabric. I think from a distance, it's incredibly striking, but up close, there's some really nice minor details which just give it that extra edge. If you look closely at the small squares, you can see they're almost made up of like a hound's tooth pattern. And then there's also these very subtle blue lines that run through the fabric, which I think just give it that extra pop. The color also offers endless color pairings when it comes to other garments. So it has the ability to create a really timeless capsule piece. This fabric also has a two-way stretch vertically, which is rare, but I think for trousers that's very good because it's really going to increase the comfort levels of your final garments. And if you can make something a bit more comfortable, why wouldn't you? Just make sure that when you are constructing your trousers, you take all the precautions that you would typically take when using a stretch fabric. So for example, you can use a twin stretch needle or a zigzag stitch. The next pattern I want to talk about is the Jacques Raincoat by I Am Patterns. I really love this design. It's a loose fitting raincoat with a really timeless feel, but it can be chopped and changed about in so many different ways in order to create something that's completely individual to you. It has two front patch pockets and is fastened with a zip at the front underneath the front placket, which is held down by snap fasteners. Again, this is an intermediate pattern. However, I would say it's gonna be a good option for beginners looking to step up into more outerwear, especially if you're not used to doing things like linings, zips and plackets, for example, because the instructions are nice and clear and also they're illustrated. Something worth noting about this pattern is that the pattern pieces do overlap. So rather than cutting them out of the paper, you need to trace them and then cut out your tracing. Although this is an extra step, it's quite nice because it means that you'll always have that pattern available and you can utilize the two different coat lengths that are included in the pattern. For this pattern, you could go completely classic with your fabric choices, perhaps utilizing a bright yellow or bright blue waterproof fabric. Alternatively, you could color block a few different options to make something that's a bit more individual. However, you could use any kind of coating and this pattern is gonna come out fantastic. Just be aware of the water resistancy level of your fabric and make sure that it fits your needs. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this fleece back soft shell from the Minerva Core range. 
It's a polyester elastane blend, which gives it that slight horizontal stretch and is just under 60 inches wide. I think that this pattern lends itself really well to a single block color, but I did want to go slightly left of field with it. So I've gone for this strong purple as I think that would really stand out from the crowd. The outer is nice and smooth, but also has this slightly grainy visual texture, which I really like as it just breaks up that single block color nicely. And the inside is super soft and sure to keep you warm through the colder months. There's a bit of stability to this fabric without it being too firm, which is perfect for this garment because it does mean it will hold its shape nicely without being uncomfortable or too boxy. As a final note on this fabric, I would say it probably sits further into the category of water resistant rather than waterproof. So do bear that in mind with your final fabric choice, depending on your needs. Next up, I've picked this hoodie and crew neck sweatshirt combination pattern from Simplicity. It's pattern number 9240. The hoodie utilizes a drawstring waist and of course a hood. And the crew neck sweatshirt has a rib knit collar and waistband, which matches the rib knit cuffs. This is a really nice straightforward pattern with clear instructions and is the perfect option if you're looking for an entry point into using stretch fabrics and jerseys. I think that the utilization of a heavier sweatshirting fabric just makes it that little bit easier to deal with than using a lighter, much more slippery t-shirt or vest fabric. There are a few fabrics that I think would work really well here. A polar fleece or a French terry or a cable knit would work really, really well. However, if you're stuck for inspiration, under fabric type on our website, you can click sweatshirts and you won't go wrong with any of the options that are there. This pattern does call for a rib knit on the cuffs and also the waistband and the collar if you're making the crew neck sweatshirts. For this, I would typically use a contrasting color just because sometimes it can be difficult to find an exact match of color for both a rib knit and a main body fabric. However, if you did want that exact color match and couldn't find the rib knit, there's nothing stopping you using the same main fabric However, be aware you will lose a lot of the stretch that a rib knit offers you there. The fabric that I've chosen for this pattern is this fleece back sweatshirting from the Minerva Core range. It's a poly cotton blend that's around 80% cotton and has a four way stretch, meaning that it stretches along the horizontal and also the vertical of the fabric. There is a slightly higher level of stretch along this vertical line. I think this color really pops in this fabric. It's got that same sort of slight melange visual texture that the soft shell fabric that we discussed earlier has. That really breaks up this single block color quite nicely. And there's a ton of different options of colors to choose from because this fabric is part of the Minerva Core range. The outside is super soft and comfortable and the inside even more so because it does have that fleecy texture. I would say it's not the thickest fabric in the world. So if you're looking for a super warm winter jumper, it might be best to look elsewhere. However, if you're looking for an autumn or spring jumper, then this is gonna be the perfect option for you. You'll also benefit from a bit of a better drape from the fabric being that little percentage thinner as well. Again, with this fabric, because it has a stretch, you will want to be using a zigzag stitch or a twin stretch needle. Alternatively, if you're feeling confident and you've got one to hand, you can overlock it straight off the bat. The next pattern we're going to talk about is McCall's 7986. I've got a lot of history with this pattern, having made it quite a few times, and I absolutely love it. It's a windbreaker raincoat pattern that comes with a few different options in terms of its front pockets, a fitted or loose waistband, and a hood. McCall's have given this an intermediate difficulty rating, and I would probably agree with that. There's a few elements that can be a bit fiddly if you're not used to them, such as the zip at the front or the side pockets, or even the facing on the inside of the collar. However, these are skills that are really transferable to a whole range of different garments. So it's a really good opportunity to test them with a pattern that's nice and clear in terms of its instructions. The thing I love about this jacket so much is just how versatile it is. You can create something that's incredibly classic looking, not too dissimilar to the Jacques raincoat that we discussed earlier, but with a few strategic cuts of the pattern pieces, as well as utilizing a bit of color blocking, you can make something that stands out that little bit if that's what you were looking for, just like I have with this piece here. For a lighter jacket, just like this one, you could use something like a ripstop. Alternatively, something like a fleece back soft shell, like we discussed earlier, would work really well with this pattern. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this camo ripstop that's part of the Minerva Core range. It's 100% polyester, it's a non-stretch fabric, 
and it's incredibly lightweight as well as having some great wind and water resistance properties to it. This camo version comes in four different colours but there are also a few options that are non-patterned if you're looking for something a bit more simplified. I chose this classic camo design because I think it would give the jacket a really nice 90s Britpop feel to it. As you can see it's a very very thin fabric but at the same time it's incredibly stable so it will create a really nice shape to any final garment that you do make with it. It's a pretty straightforward fabric to sew with and as an added benefit it doesn't really fray at all. One thing you do need to be careful of however is when it comes to pressing it is essentially 100% plastic so if you use too hot of an iron it's just going to melt instantly. The best thing to do is always use a pressing cloth and make sure that your iron is turned down to a cool level. As well as this, when you're sewing, be aware that you're essentially punching holes in a solid fabric. So any unpicking that you need to do will leave very small needle holes in the remaining fabric. The next pattern I want to talk to you about is this shirt jacket pattern from Simplicity. Pattern number 9388. It's a button fronted jacket with two patch pockets with flaps on the chest side seam pockets and also button cuffs. There's also a lining for the back yoke and the sleeves. As you'd expect from Simplicity, the instructions here are nice and clear. So although it's listed as an intermediate difficulty, it's a really great choice for beginners who are looking to level up their skills and try out things like setting in collars and sleeves and adding buttons and buttonholes as well. For fabric choices, denim, cord, flannel, or even a heavy wool are all gonna work perfectly for this jacket and you can really add your own personality to it by utilizing different button choices as well. As is, it's the perfect autumn or early winter jacket pattern. However, if you wanted to swap out the lining that's in there for a full lining, it's gonna make it a bit more suitable for winter, especially if you choose a bit of a thicker fabric for that. The fabric that I've chosen for this pattern is this amazing faux fur from the Minerva Core range. It's 100% polyester and a non-stretch fabric and comes in a variety of colors and styles. I've opted for this snow leopard pattern because we're talking about autumn and winter, so that seemed the most appropriate. This is a Velboa fur, so it has a very low pile to it, which is fantastic because it means you don't have to worry about some of the things that you do when you're sewing with a fur that has a longer pile to it. And as well as that, it's gonna be that little bit less messy when it comes to your sewing room. Now, obviously this leans more towards a statement piece than a capsule wardrobe, and I absolutely love that. I think the pattern has real impact from a distance as well as close up and due to it not being too heavy it's going to be a fantastic option for this shirt jacket pattern. It's also probably a lot more practical than you'd think. It can go in the washing machine just like any other fabric and also due to the inner of the fabric there is a certain level of water resistance to it. You could also use this fabric as the lining of a jacket due to the right side being incredibly soft and comfortable as well as obviously nice and warm. If you do decide to use it as the outer of a jacket, beware, you'll probably need to fully line the jacket just because the wrong side of this fabric does have that kind of plasticky feel that faux furs tend to have. Next up is this blazer pattern, Simplicity 8962. It's the holiday season, which means we've got work parties, family gatherings, and a whole range of events. So it's always gonna be handy to have a blazer available if you need to smarten up a bit. This is a lined blazer with two buttons along the front, three button patch pockets, a single back vent, and also button cuffs. It definitely sits further towards the level of an advanced sewist. However, the instructions are incredibly comprehensive and there's even a sew along video to help you. So if you do have time on your side, I'd say absolutely go for it. I also think this is a really nice middle ground between casual garments and the more advanced tailored formal garments, which can be a little bit daunting. Denim, wool, velvet or corduroy would all work really, really well with this jacket. And the beauty of it is they're all gonna give you completely different end results. A wool is gonna give you a lot more of a rustic countryside feel, whereas a velvet perhaps will look a little bit more formal and a denim will give you a nice casual blazer at the end of it. This is perfect because it means that you can make a jacket that's exactly for your needs. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this suiting fabric that's part of the Minerva Core range. It's a polyester viscose mix, it's non-stretch and it's around 60 inches wide. It's also available in a range of different colors. I'm a big fan of checks on patterns and the color purple, so this one was a no-brainer for me. 
I think it looks fantastic from a distance. And then also up close, you can see that these blue lines running through the fabric have got some real impact. It's a classic fabric print with that kind of preppy vibe to it. But at the same time, I think the colors just make it really stand out from the crowd. It's a medium weight fabric, so it's absolutely perfect for this blazer and would match really well with a pair of gray or black trousers. Or if you wanted to go full tilt, you could use the same fabric to make a pair of matching trousers. There's good body to this fabric, so it's gonna work well with this jacket pattern because you do want there to be that certain level of stability when creating the shape of the jacket. However, it is nice and comfortable still, so it's gonna be a good easy wear. Next up is the Fulford Jeans pattern by Thread Theory. This is a classic styled straight leg jeans pattern with all of the elements that you would expect to see on a pair of jeans. That includes patch pockets on the back, built-in side pockets, a zipper fly, and the rivets as well. This pattern is super cool. Everything is really high quality and the instructions are pretty simplistic to follow for such a complicated garment. The thing I really like about this pattern is that its construction allows for amendments after it's been finished, which is perfect if your size tends to fluctuate a bit throughout the course of a year. These jeans have a very classic, almost vintage look to them, with a relatively high rise compared to a lot of modern jeans. It gives them almost a bit of a James Dean feel, which I really, really like. They pair really well with a flannel shirt or a plain white t-shirt, or perhaps even a snow leopard print shirt jacket. In terms of fabrics, denim is always gonna be your obvious choice here. However, a heavy twill or a corduroy would also work absolutely brilliantly. This pattern is designed to make hard wearing heavy duty jeans. So bear that in mind with your fabric choices. For this pattern, the fabric that I've chosen is this stretch wash denim from the Minerva Core range. It's a polyester and cotton blend with a small percentage of elastane. This gives it a slight stretch across the width of the fabric, which is great for adding that level of comfort without needing to worry too much about breaking in a new denim. I chose this anthracite colorway for my jeans as I like the lighter color and think it pairs really nicely with a darker contrast stitching. Especially on this pattern where there's a lot of flat filled seams, the stitching is going to be front and center and it's gonna add an additional dimension to the finished garments. This fabric, as I mentioned, is part of the Minerva Core range and there's a lot of different options of color just in case you were looking for something that was perhaps a bit darker. As you'd expect from denim, there is a bit of weight to this fabric at 280 GSM. However, there's still a really nice drape to it and it's quite a soft fabric. However, it's not so soft that I would worry about the structure of the finished garment, which is gonna be very, very important to a pair of classic cut jeans like these. Next up is pattern number 8940 from Vogue Patterns. It's a two-in-one of trousers and a double-breasted coat. We are going to be focusing mostly on the coat here. However, the trousers are a nice added bonus for this pattern. This is a really nicely constructed jacket that has a few details that I think help it really stand out. The seam placements being just off the shoulders and away from the sides are a nice little touch. It's also lined and there's two pockets on the outside and one inside pocket. This is a great smart coat with a timeless look and I think the semi-fitted style of it really adds to its contemporary level that might be missing if it were a bit more of a looser fit. Vogue have listed this pattern as suitable for advanced sewists. I would agree with that because there are a few elements which are a bit fiddly. However, as I've said before, if time is on your side, go for it. It's a steep learning curve for sure, However, there's a lot of techniques in here which are really useful when it comes to other garments as well. I think the fabric choices illustrated on the pattern are absolutely fantastic. Heavy coatings in camel or black are, once again, timeless. However, one of the beauties of this pattern is it really offers the opportunity to create something that's so individual. Using a patterned heavy wool, you can achieve this, and then you can even add to that by utilizing some statement buttons. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this amazing coating from the Minerva Core range. It's a wool viscose blend with a slight stretch across the width, which is just under 55 inches. As it's part of the Minerva Core range, there's a whole range of colors to choose from as well. It would pair amazingly with a pair of mustard trousers or a mustard sweatshirt, or perhaps a gray if you were looking for something a little bit paired back. This fabric is quite coarse, as you would expect from a wool viscose blend. So whatever you do decide to make with this fabric, you're going to want to fully line it. There is a nice drape to it, 
probably a bit more than you would get with a fabric with a higher wool content, but there's still a good amount of weight to it and structure, which is going to be perfect for this coat pattern. It's quite a heavy fabric with a decent amount of depth, so it's perfect for a wintry coat. However, when you're sewing through several layers, you're going to want to take it nice and slow because those layers are gonna add up in depth very, very quickly. Our penultimate pattern today is the Dean sweatshirt from Bobbins and Buttons. This is a raglan sleeve sweatshirt with a rib neck collar, cuffs and waistband. And again, is a really nice introduction to stretch or jersey fabrics. The instructions are nice and clear and there's not too many pieces to be juggling about. This is a really classic design that I obviously love. It's got a bit of a vintage sportswear feel to it, which I think is really cool. And there's quite a few different styling options in terms of how you approach this garment with those raglan sleeves. You could block color the sleeves and create a patterned body to give it a bit more of a statement. Alternatively, you can go nice and understated by using a single block color the entire way around. Due to the nature of this pattern being a bit of an all rounder, you could go for any in a range of fabrics. You could go for a very, very light sweatshirting fabric to create something that's almost closer to a long sleeve t-shirt. Alternatively, you could go for a very heavy duty sweatshirting fabric if you were looking to make something to really get you through the winter. Fabrics like French Terry or to be honest, any sweatshirt knit are gonna be perfect for this garment. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this sweater knit stretch fabric. It has a four way stretch with the majority of the stretch being along the width and is a polyester fabric with a small percentage of elastane. This fabric is a Minerva exclusive, so it's only available from us. Although this fabric's a medium weight, I would say that it's lighter than some of the other sweatshirt fabrics that I've used. And as mentioned, I think that makes it perfect for this pattern. As well as this, I think the print really jumps out. It's super fun without being too wild. And the blacks and greys in the background give it a real depth, which I think just adds to the brilliance of this fabric. The outer of the fabric is really smooth and soft, and the underside is equally smooth with a bit of a shine to it. The thing that's great about this fabric is its stability during sewing, despite the pretty substantial stretch across the width of the fabric. It doesn't shift around too much, and it does hold on to itself pretty well, whether it's right sides together or wrong sides together. I think this fabric paired with a light gray ribbing would work really well. I also think it would look fantastic in this pattern with some contrast sleeves. Last but definitely not least is Simplicity Pattern 8845. This is one of my go-to patterns and I've used it to create a whole range of garments. It's a denim jacket pattern with a button front closing, two side pockets, built-in front pockets, and a whole range of really neat little details. This is an intermediate difficulty jacket pattern However, again, I think a beginner who takes their time with it could do a really, really good job here. As usual, the instructions are very, very clear. And again, there's even a sew along video to help you with the bits that you might get stuck with. The thing I love most about this pattern is just how many applications there are to it. I've used it in the past, not just to create denim jackets, but also bomber jackets, Harrington style jackets, and even shirts, just with a few minor tweaks, a little bit of tape, and usually some reversible changes. Keeping with the original denim jacket plan of the pattern, however, I'd recommend a cord or a denim or a heavy wool for this one. And there's plenty of opportunities to make it really interesting with a range of color and fabric combinations. The fabric I've chosen for this pattern is this jumbo cord from the Minerva core range. This is a five whale cord, meaning there are five columns per inch on this fabric. So from a distance, it's still very distinct. This is 100% cotton, non-stretch, and available with a width of 55 inches. This is quite a heavy weighted cord, which is exactly what you want for this kind of pattern as you want a certain level of durability as well as structure to the fabric. There's a slight sheen to it and the nap does impact its color slightly. So be careful when you're cutting out your pattern pieces that everything is the right way up. Also be careful when it comes to pressing as you don't want to press down the nap too much. Pink is one of my go-to colors when it comes to selecting fabrics, so this was a really easy choice for me. It's got a really nice dark, dusty pink quality to it, and the photos are very true to what it's like in person. Not only that, as it is a Minerva core range fabric, there's a whole ton of color options to choose from if this isn't your style.
So those are my top 10 autumn winter patterns, along with a few fabric suggestions that I think would make some fantastic garments and a great addition to any self-made wardrobe. Let me know what your favorite patterns and fabrics are in the comments below, and don't forget to post your final makes to Minerva. We're all really looking forward to seeing what you come up with next. As a reminder, all of the patterns and fabrics that I've spoken about today are available from us and are linked directly below this video for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.